Okay, so far then, we've seen that there's no good evidence that pesticides alone can cause deformities. High doses of pesticide can kill tadpoles, but they weren't causing the deformities found in nature. On the other hand, there's good evidence that these parasites found in the ponds do have the power to cause deformities. As you increase the number of parasites in the, uh, in the water, the number of deformities increases. So at this point, it looks like parasites are the cause of these deformities. However, scientists suspected uh, from other research that maybe the pesticides might be interacting with parasites to cause higher levels of deformities than just the parasites alone. And one of the ideas here would be that maybe the pesticides are weakening the frogs in some way, weakening the tadpoles, uh, maybe weakening the immune system, making the tadpoles more vulnerable to parasites. So in this final experiment, the researchers were trying to address this possibility. The experiment required the use of these cages you see in this picture here. Uh, and there were two types of cages, or two types of, types of netting on these cages. For some of the cages, the netting was very fine, and so the holes in the netting were very small. And these holes were too small to allow parasites into the cage where the frogs, where the tadpoles were. Other cages had netting where the holes were bigger, that would be big enough to allow for the parasite to go through the netting. So the researchers were going to set up two types of cages in these ponds. Parasites were present in the ponds, uh, but the parasites would be able to get into some of the cages, but not able to get into other cages. Here's a picture of the experiment. So in the pond, in each pond, the researchers set up two types of cages. The large holes here would allow parasites uh, to get to the tadpoles. The small holes would block the parasites. And furthermore, they found some lakes had high pesticides, uh, high pesticide levels from nearby farms and so on, and other lakes had no pesticide. So they were able then to set up four different conditions. There were two cages in the high pesticide ponds one that allowed parasites, one that blocked parasites, but then there were two cages in the no pesticide ponds, one that allowed parasites, one that blocked parasites. So you have four conditions in the experiment. And here are the results of the experiment. So we have the y-axis here, percent deformity of the tadpoles, and then on the x-axis, the pond condition. And we had four conditions, so we're going to have four data bars. Take a look. In the no pesticide ponds and no parasite conditions, so that's the, the small holes that block the parasites, zero deformities. In the ponds with no pesticide, but the parasites were allowed to get through the, the larger holes, 70 to 80 percent rate of deformity. And so comparing these two bars, this does show that parasites are a critical factor. Parasites are causing the deformity. No parasites here, parasites here. And you see the increase in the deformity rates. Now let's look over here in these last two conditions. In the ponds with pesticide, but no parasites can get into the cage because of the small holes, 0% deformity. Again, where there's no parasite, no deformity, even if there is pesticide present. But then look at the last column last bar here. These are the ponds with pesticide and also parasites. So the holes were big enough for the parasites to get through. And this bar is the highest of them all. In other words, it's higher than the bar over here, indicating that the combination of pesticides and parasites causes more deformity than just the parasites alone. So this difference in height between these two bars indicates that the pesticides are somehow helping the parasites. And one possibility is that the pesticides are weakening the immune systems of the tadpoles, making them more vulnerable to the parasites. Further research um, was necessary to establish that.